In today's video, Jimmy and I are going to debate a topic that we've talked about on his that's channel a few times. That's dear to my heart. <laughs> it is very near and dear to Jimmy's heart for sure. It is. And he's got his, he's passionate about his opinion and I can appreciate that and I love that. And I want your opinion on this topic as well. So do me a favor, please make sure that you guys comment on this. Let's get right into it. Jimmy feels that as taxes and insurance continue to raise due to home price valuations increasing, et cetera, et cetera, that you really don't ever own your home, even if you don't have a mortgage, and that you're basically just renting your home from the government. So he, here's here's the whole deal, okay? I believe that you should pay property taxes. I do. I believe mm -hmm. that, you know, we need roads, we need schools, we need fire, we need police, you know, we need all that stuff, okay? But I think that the system gets abused, okay? And I think that certain things happen that shouldn't be happening when it comes to property taxes. And I think when property taxes get to a certain point, all right, mm -hmm. like, you know, building a house over here, say the taxes are ten, twelve thousand dollars a year. That's a thousand dollars a month just in property taxes to have the privilege for me to live in my on my own property. Right. Okay. Okay. So I have to pay a thousand dollars a month for the privilege for me to live on my own property. So now, if I don't pay it, what's going to happen? They have a lot of power. They're going to take it. They're going to take it away from me. They're going to do a, a sale of it to right. pay the back property right. pay taxes. Pay back taxes. So here, here's the deal. What I'm saying is if it gets to a certain point, do you really own the property? Honestly, do you really own the property? Now, if, you're, if you have a mortgage, you have to have insurance. Right. So now with these hurricanes, insurance is probably going to go, you know, six to $12,000 a year, at least over here. So that's $24,000 now a year. Right. You're if paying $2,000 a month now. $2,000 a month. So... If I don't pay the insurance and I have a mortgage, they're going to put forced insurance on it. Which if, is even more expensive, which, so you understand that. You, it's The mortgage the, company. The mortgage company can force you, can buy insurance for you at a premium, and then they charge you that amount. So now i got to pay $24,000 a year, and if I don't pay it, I lose the home. I lose the property. Yep. So... Do I really, the question is, what do you guys think? Do I really own this property if I have to pay $24,000 a year to own it? Or am I just like a glorified renter that I can say, hey, I own waterfront property? Well, and I agree with you. So is it a, a dollar amount that makes you feel that way? Or is it really in general? Let's say you're paying $1,000 a month in property taxes because of the value of your home. Or is it, okay, well, I'm only really paying $400 a month in property taxes. So it's because it's less money, it feels better. So do you really ever, I guess the question is really, no matter where you live, do you ever really own your home? Because if you stop paying taxes at $400 a month or $2,000 a month, the outcome is still the same, right? Yeah, but no, you know what? But I agree that prop, you know, taxes should be paid on properties, okay? Right. And the, um, you're gonna get comments below saying, what is he talking about? I, don't, I shouldn't have to pay any taxes on my property, but you drive down those roads, you know, you call that police. If the, your house is on fire, you're going to call that fire department. So, right. but it has to be reasonable, you know? Well, you got trash, you know, in some places they're private. I get that. Yeah. But for the most part in our area anyway, they're, they're, it's a part of the county system. But look at New Hampshire, okay? Mm -hmm. New Hampshire, you know, when I lived up there, they base everything on property tax. They don't have an income tax and they don't have a sales tax. Okay. okay. So, so, okay. But the tax, the property tax are stupid there too. But here we have a sales tax, like right. kind of high, seven percent sales tax. Yep. And then you know people are going to comment on your channel and they're going to say, "Hey, you know, well you're homesteaded." I was like, "Yeah, my primary home is homestead, but this one I, you can't homestead two properties." Right. So homestead is basically it's part of the Save Our Homes uh, initiative here in the state of Florida, and it sets a cap of three percent increase in taxes at any one given time. Now there's a formula to this and it's, it's, so it's not like I just look at the assessed value times 3% and that's what it, it's, they can't go past that specific dollar amount. But what it does is it does set a cap. That way you're not going from one year, you did a 1% increase and the next year you've got an 8% or a 9% increase overall on your property taxes. It's so that you have a little bit more of an even playing field. 
Yeah, but that's okay. So I understand that, but now here's the problem with that too: is like if you bought your house 15, 20 years ago, like I have golden handcuffs on my house. Right. Okay, and let me explain what I'm talking about. So I bought my house during the last crash, the, the primary one I live in. I, I got it for a good price mm -hmm. because the market was down, and so my taxes weren't that bad. Okay, and and I was okay with them. Now every year they could increase, I think, 3% the most. Yeah, roughly, yeah. Unless they, they, they change the millage rate or something like that. Yeah, there's some rules, but in general, just for ease of conversation, it's we're not getting into a long math problem. Hypothetically, I'm not telling you this is what I pay for taxes, but say I pay $4,000 a year in taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, if I sold my house, and say I sold my house for 800000 Yep. Now, the person that's buying my house, they're going to move in, and they're going to say, hey, you know, because they're going to be paying $4,000 for the first year. And then the following year, when the, when the gets reassessed, now they're paying fourteen thousand dollars a year. Right, and that's because Florida pays their taxes in the rears. So meaning that's so if you purchased a home today and closed on, let's say you closed on Jimmy's house at eight hundred thousand, his taxes that are reported when you're looking at things in the county records are going to be, let's say, let's just do for easy math, four thousand dollars a year, and then you know now you've paid double for that price so your taxes are going to in essence let's call it eight thousand dollars a year that's your new tax but it's not until the next year you've been in your house for a really long time let's say somebody's been in their house for 20 30 years and they bought it for a hundred thousand now it's worth six hundred thousand and then somebody comes in and purchases it well they enjoyed the lower tax rate for that 30 year period right it, it only incrementally went up but the taxes back 30 years ago to that individual who purchased the home felt difficult. That's kind of where we start to get into this debate, right? It was difficult for them. So as the years went on, their property values went up, but their taxes didn't go up to what the market value was. So that's what you're trying to use as an excuse for what's going on. No, not, it's not an excuse. It's just that's reality. I mean, so now when you purchase that home, the home's worth X dollars, and we're not even taking into consideration the massive amount of rapid increase that we had on right. property values that's because that was that was one of those the, during the unicorn years where we shot up 40 50 percent here in our area um because that's what's hurting people too but me as a re guy that wants to retire you know if i sell my house and then i'm going to buy in the house that in another area mm -hmm. i gotta pay seven eight hundred thousand so now i'm used to paying say hypothetically four thousand dollars a year yeah. So well, now I'm going to be paying 16000 and I'm trying to retire. No. But you can't. And but that's the I, golden handcuff. That's handcuffs. the golden handcuff. So and the, the only way I can do it is I can sell the house and move out of the state and then go move to a, a state like Tennessee or Georgia or something. And then the, the taxes are pretty much the same what you're going to be paying from the buyer, from what I understand. Yeah. I'm not sure on that. But that's where, the, where it comes into, you know, again, on this housing some of part of the housing crisis that we have where people are just sitting and not they're not letting go of that equity in their home because they're on that fixed income now you've been in that house for 30 years so you're kind of in that retirement range where you have to start right watching your money month to month and so you're going okay well if i'm going to move i'm only paying you know 250 300 a month for my taxes just alone now i'm going to quadruple that or even more they, you might not have that and, budget. And Bill, I know, you know, because I do inspections all the time, I yeah. know people that are in the 70s, 80s, just the kids are gone. It's just a husband and a wife, and, and the house is 4,000 4, square foot. Yeah. Like, they, the guy doesn't know where his wife is, or his wife doesn't know where his hu her husband is, or vice versa. You know, they don't know where it is, and the house is so big. I'm like, why are you living in a six-bedroom, four-bath house? Right. And they're like, if we sell it, we're not going to be able to afford it. You know, unless we go into like a condo or a townhouse and we want we want to go to a smaller house, but right. the neighborhoods we want, there's still 700000 and we're going to be paying so much and in taxes. And the taxes are going to be, th now there's transferability, which yeah. we're not going to get into. It still, it still hurts. And that's one of the big problems that we have with, you know, inventory, because people are in that situation. And that's where it's like a little planning out in the future, because it makes sense, because I've seen people that are, it's like it just doesn't make sense for them to sell. Doesn't make sense Why would for, you spend more money it, it to get a smaller house? It, it doesn't make sense for yeah. me to sell either. No, absolutely know? not. It, does, it doesn't make sense. Mm -mm. The other thing that bothers me too, and I'll be honest with you, I think a lot of property tax money gets wasted. I would agree with you on that. Okay, it gets, it gets wasted. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I'm not gonna get into politics, but 
some of the things that they're spending money on are just like stupid. Yeah, let me give you an example on what I perceive to be waste. All right, it, go ahead. Just get, you guys give me your opinion on this. So there is a city in our area that it's a city beautification initiative and any city building that is constructed or has a certain percentage of renovation done to it, there's a percentage of the total budget that must be set aside for art and beautification only. And I'm not talking landscaping, it has to be like an art piece, paintings, uh, an actual piece. So that means they dedicate an area of that city with building- With taxpayer money? With taxpayer money. That's freaking stupid. And I think that <laughs> is appalling. Now. I don't know if that policy has been rescinded, just to be fair, but I can tell you that I know that it was there recently. Here's, a, here's, a, here's one, this, is, just, it's, this one is from New Hampshire in a town that me and Tanya used to live in. They wanted a new town center, and I'm not talking about like a building, I'm talking about it looks like a ranch, and it was like 60 feet by say 40 feet, you know, like a square, nice, simple. And they had a meeting about it, and they're like, you know, with a ramp because they have to have handicapped bathrooms and all that. Of stuff. course, yeah, so, I totally understand that. So it wasn't a big town, so I, you figure, you know, three hundred thousand, four hundred. The land was donated to them by somebody, so they didn't even have to pay for the land. Okay. And they don't have to worry about property taxes or anything like that because it's a township. And they came back saying, "Yeah, we need one point six million dollars." And I'm like, "Holy smokes! Are you freaking kidding me? You need one point six million dollars? The freaking thing is like, back then it was like two hundred fifty thousand. 300 grand. Yeah. It looks like a little ranch house. 1.6 million dollars they need. Right. And like, oh yeah, that bathroom, the handicapped bathroom is going to cost 150,000 dollars. Are you kidding me? That's insane. You know, and I'm not, you know, when we're talking about things like this, I'm not, it's like, I get it. Cities pay, typically pay a little bit more because there's bureaucracy, there's, there's things like that from, then they should be building their buildings to a little bit higher standard because they want them to last a lot longer. Um, I get all that. And we're in by no means saying that the city workers don't deserve raises because they do. It, we're talking about the waste in regards to some of this bureaucracy and these silly things I think that are just insane. I think everything can get done the way it's supposed to get done with 50% of the money. And then people are going to comment on your channel. It's like, oh, yeah. well, why, why doesn't Jimmy run for politics? Because I just can't <laughs> deal with politicians. You can't do it. I can't, can't do, do it. it dude. No, there's no way. No. Because, because my whole my whole philosophy and it's just like, it's common sense, you know. And even the fighting between Democrats and Republicans on budgets and where to spend money, I think is stupid. Just do what's common sense. Right. Coming from working for a local government, you know, I understand how the budgets work there. I understand, you know, obviously people are the most expensive, but some of the pro, and you know, then we have to have the certain programs and I'm all for those libraries, books, but I think, you know, I think, programs. You, I think you could do all that. I think yeah. you could do all that, you know, on, on a lot less money because it's really easy to spend somebody else's money. Right. It's freaking easy. Like, okay, I want that book, you know, Oh, I'm not spending my money. I'm spending your money. Right. What do you want for it? Five bucks? No problem. Bill, give him five bucks. Right. right. But if you ask me, it's like, no, I'll give you two fifty. And then people will say, oh, well, you know, they do report to the citizens and the county commission reports down, da 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 da, da. Uh, Just, it, I remember it, counting it, toilet paper rolls yeah. and pens. You know, the, when, they, when they have money left over, use it or lose it, okay? Oh, oh, you still have money yeah. in the budget, you better use it on something, just freaking waste it, buy, right. well, buy whatever, or you're not gonna get it next year. Right, I hate that philosophy, it doesn't make sense. Use it or lose it. It just logically doesn't make sense and I really think that the cities could do more with less and not cutting back service, not cutting back salaries and benefits and things, because that's the easiest thing to cut back. And that's typically what I see happen from people that I speak to across everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, kind of sorry, we got off. <laughs> We got off on taxes, but it does kind of tie in to property taxes. Yeah, because if you're buying, if you're paying so much in property taxes and insurance, well, insurance, if you don't have a mortgage, you could go bare if you want. Yeah, but so that's optional. You know. But if you have a mortgage, you have to have it. But if if taxes go up to a certain level, I just don't feel like you own the property. Right. So let me know what you think. We we definitely value your opinion on the tax purpose. You know, if you still pay property taxes to a certain level. Do you feel like you own your home? Do you feel like you ever actually really own anything?
So we're gonna leave it at that today. Do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate it. Leave some comments below and we will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. And Bill's gonna place a video right here. You should watch <laughs> this one. This would be a good video. Because, because I helped him pick it out. He did, he did. He said, this is the one that we gotta do. So All right, thank watch you. that video. Thank you and we'll talk to you in the next one.